everyone. So behind today's little door we have this beautiful painting by Claude Monet. It's called The Magpie or La Pie in French because of this little bird here set on the gate in the middle of this gorgeous snowy landscape. Yesterday we talked a little bit about the sense of smelling and what Christmas smells like usually. So that the typical sense that we associate with Today I'd like to talk about a different sense and that is the sense of seeing our eyesight and specifically how we perceive light. And I think uh, Impressionism is a great way to approach that. As you might know, most new art forms aren't super popular at the start. And that was also true for Impressionism. Claude Monet today is an extremely popular artist, but at the time he faced a lot of rejection and um, had difficulties exhibiting his paintings or selling his paintings, obviously. It didn't really fit what people expected from a real painter. And that is because of how Monet approached what he saw and the light that he saw. In fact, the, um, the word Impressionism comes from one of his paintings because he called it Impression. And it wasn't really used as a compliment at first. But the special thing about um, Impressionism is that it doesn't really try to depict the world as it actually is, sort of as it exists independently from us. It doesn't care about really getting uh, the lines right and showing this realistically. It's rather about the essence of what we see and how we perceive it, so the impression that we have in our mind's eye. And a lot of that has to do with the light. When we look through his paintings, we can see that. For example, here he has an entire series called the Haystacks, which he painted throughout the seasons. This one here is during summer, during sunset. But he kind of showed how the same scene changed depending on when you came to look at it. Whether the sun was just rising, whether it was a very bright day or an overcast day. Maybe it was raining. And you see that in a lot of his paintings. And I think there's sort of an immediacy to seeing these. There's more than just sort of perceiving what these places look like, but to me it always feels a bit like I'm actually there. Like I know what it feels like to be there. And that is especially true with this one. It's hard to find a print that really does it justice because it lifts so much of the glittering snow. And of course you can't really reproduce that. A couple of years ago it was on display in Vienna for a special exhibition and I just completely fell in love with it at the time. But normally it's in Paris. And if you ever get the chance to see it there, I very much recommend it.
impressionists often painted outside, en plein air instead of in the studio, because it allowed him to study the changing light. And we have a description of someone going for a walk during a very, very cold winter's day and running across a figure dressed in three coats on top of one another, painting outside, which was Monet, trying to capture the light of that winter's day. One of the aspects that was disliked is the specific use of colour and brushstrokes. In Impressionism, the brushstrokes are visible. They're often quite short and quite strong. Um, and it gets even more pronounced in later paintings. This is one of his earlier ones. And of course, if you look at paintings from, say, around 1900, they're very realistic and uh, painters often try to hide their specific techniques or their specific brushstrokes so you can actually see them but here you can personally I think it really adds to the um, sort of the feeling of the snow but of course at the time people just didn't know what to make of it Another really interesting aspect of this painting is the use of colour. So that's also typical for Impressionism. Previously, painters often started with a dark background. But in this case, Monet started with a light background and built on top of that. And in fact, he avoided using black for the shadows. If you look at the colours, you can see that there's sort of a, a yellow tone to the actual snow, so there's a, a yellow light in the air. But here, behind the little wicker fence, when you look at the colours, these are sort of blue and violet. So you have a stark contrast between the two kinds of colours that he used. Beforehand, painters often assumed that shadows were in fact um, black or grey, that they were darker. They desaturated their colours, but Impressionists did something else. They thought of shadows as a form of light, as a reflection of the specific elements that you see of the snow or of other surfaces. So, light interacts with these surfaces and creates a specific colour that we perceive. And they try to recreate that. And I think that he really did succeed in a lot of ways. When I stood in front of this painting recently, it really felt like you're outside and you can just sense the cold winter air. You know what it feels like on your skin, how your nose is getting cold, maybe your toes, even though you're wearing thick winter boots. You know what the glittering snow looks like. How you can see your breath, if it's cold enough. What it sounds like when you walk through the snow. So there's a lot of very immediate memories that came back. And I really enjoyed that. It's almost like it's pulling you in. And if you're feeling a little cold now, thinking about all of those experiences, then um, Maybe you want to look at a different painting with me now. Because I think if you're going for a walk in winter to enjoy all those sensations, it's always a good idea to have a plan for when you come back. And personally, I think the best plan for winter is to snuggle up in bed. This is also exhibited in Paris. 
and in fact it's called a luli, it's the bed or in bed and it's by a post-impressionist by Henri Toulouse-Lautrec and I just absolutely adore the way he depicted this where you can just about see half of this person's face peeking out with the wild hair here on top that sleepy expression neck deep in a mountain of duets and blankets that giant pillow overhead and I think that that's my plan for the rest of the night Maybe you want to get snuggly too and just enjoy a long winter's evening being as comfortable and warm as possible I definitely support you in that decision Alright I think that's it for today and I hope I'll see you again tomorrow